Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 64 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Today I want to continue some of the work that we started last episode with the goal of at least being close to, if not complete, with the automated Batania rune system that I came up with. Um, so we have a lot to do today, so I'm going to just jump right into it. Uh, last episode we set this fancy boy up, uh, which I didn't set up the crafting recipes for, but... Long story short, uh, you throw a piece of gold in here or a piece of diamond or something like that, and you're going to get uh, the appropriate items made. The gold will get turned into that thing, and then it will immediately be brought over to here, where it will be stamped into the appropriate item and sent back to the chest. It's pretty cool. Pretty proud of it. Not going to lie. Um, what I'm going to do next... Ooh, yeah, I'm thinking I might want to double up some things here. I might, I might implement some pure Sirtis crafting, because we're going to need that uh, pretty soonish. But um, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to need to implement that. But um, let's look into what we need to do for the Batania stuff that I've planned. So my goal, okay, at the end of this is to auto craft with the Runic Altar. Now here's the tricks with the Runic Altar. Um, you could request items all you want all day long. Um, from a refined storage system. But here's the deal, right? If, for example, we wanted to make, I don't know, let's say a certain number of runes. Let's say we wanted to make four runes of water, right? Um, you get two at a time. So you need to drop two fishing rods, two sugar canes, two bone meal, mana steel, and mana powder, right? Double up this recipe. But if you put both sets of items on the runic altar, it's not gonna work. So you need to make sure that you restrict the crafting recipe is to be one set of items at a time. The other thing that you need to worry about is crafting two different runes at the same time. So what if I ask for rune of water and rune of fire at the same time? If both sets of items landed on there, or if I got maybe the fishing rod plus the nether wart and the gunpowder, that would be bad, right? And we've encountered a similar problem with this setup over here, where sometimes we get the wrong number of items or, or the wrong set of items getting mixed and matched. Bad times all around. Uh, so these are problems that we have to avoid with uh, the runic altar crafting. Not to mention the fact that runic altar crafting needs to be managed with uh, once the crafting process is complete, you have to drop the living rock on top of it and then hit it with a wand of the forest. So lots of stuff uh, required. So first things a first. Uh, we're going to want a dropper from Actually Editions. That's gonna be the very first component that we're gonna make for this, um, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, that should be cool. And that's gonna pretty much go up here. And what I'm gonna to try to do is make this look cool. So um, let's go here. Nice. And uh, yeah, what we're gonna to wanna to do is make this both look cool, but also function really well. The other thing I'm gonna do probably is dig underground here. Let's get our drill upgrade so that I can clear out a decent amount of space. Nice. Because this will actually require, believe it or not, a decent amount of space. So I need to make sure that I've got something cleared down here. Does that sound cool? Let's do that. Neat. Okay, uh, let me get a couple other items that we're going to need here. Now, um, I'm like I said last episode, I'm going to be using a bit of Applied Energistics, and there's a very good reason for that. And there's this one little thing that Applied Energistics does really well um, that Refined Storage can't do in 1.10. It does have the feature in 1.11, which is cool, but it doesn't have the feature in 1.10, so that's a bummer. So Applied Energistics is the route we're taking. All right, so let's start off one step at a time. When you're building anything super complex like this, what you really want to do is focus one step at a time. So let's do the first step, which is going to be getting the items from a chest to be dropped into the runic altar, because that's basically what we need to do at the end of the day. Um, so let's set that up. Um, there's going to be a couple components that we need to make this happen, uh, and some of that is going to involve some super circuit maker stuff, uh, which is fun times for all. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do some other Super Circuit Maker things. We're going to want a couple of you. I'm going to want my screwdriver from Super Circuit Maker. I think I'm going to need an Ender Pulsar. Um, and what else am I going to need? I'll probably need one of these guys, an inventory scanner. Useful little device. It's basically a comparator. 
Cool. Uh, and we're probably going to also need some redstone torches. Cool. Um, so this setup is going to work like so. And um, maybe I want to have my redstone comparator uh, with red string so that I can do all of this underground. That would be cool. Red string, red string comparator would be a nice thing to have. So let's get some of you and comparator. Nice. And then I'm also going to want a repeater, just a vanilla one. And you'll understand why all these things are required in a minute. All right, got a few more components that we're going to need. We're going to want to bind a few things here. So first off, we want the red string comparator, right? That's going to be the thing that's going to emit a redstone signal. And that's how we're going to know when this crafting component is done. And I'm going to show you exactly how this is going to work. Um, so let's go ahead and get some redstone just for now. This is temporary, but it's there to show you guys how this functions, right? Um, so you should have no problem reading that and emitting a redstone signal. I th think I have to put a comparator there, don't I? I do. Um, so let's actually build the circuit that we're gonna need. Um, here's the trick with this guy, right? And if we grabbed our uh, Batania book, the Lexical Batania, we would see the following information about the runic altar. Okay, regarding redstone signaling. Okay, here's how it works. Do, 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 do. Attaching a comparator to it will emit a signal strength of 1 if the altar is accepting mana, and a signal strength of 2 if it's ready to craft the rune. What this means is, um, when we have the appropriate items on the runic altar, it's going to emit a signal strength of 1. When it's accepted all the mana that it needs from its mana pool, and it's ready for the living rock to be dropped on it and hit with the wand, it's going to emit a signal strength of 2. So we have to read these two... Um, read these two signals and determine when we're going to do certain things, right? So for that, we're going to use Super Circuit Maker. And there's a reason we're doing it this way. Trust in the dyer. There's some complexity that we have to add to this. Um, and we're going to see why that is in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is place this dude right here. This basically is a comparator. It's called an inventory scanner because it scans an inventory, but it basically works like a comparator. It's going to emit the same signal that a comparator would output. Um, so if we do this, for example, okay, um, and I want to get from Super Circuit Maker this guy so we can read the signal strength coming off of here, right? So right now, he's emitting a signal power level of zero, okay? If we dropped the appropriate items on here, one, two, three, four, five, hey now, I'm missing another word. There we go. Check him out he's emitting a signal strength of 17, which remember is one, right? As soon as the man is done going in there, he's emitting a signal strength of 34, which is two, okay? So those are the metrics we have to watch for. Neat. Now, because I don't want to actually craft this thing, I'm going to, uh, I guess I have to break you, huh? Haha. Now remember, there's a little bit of a nuance to the way conduits work, right? Uh, if I were to get from here, oh, what can I put down for now? I need to rearrange my inventory a little bit because I got a lot of junk in here because um, I have a lot to do. Uh, let's get a redstone lamp, if I may. Cool, I have some of those. Okay, you're going to go there, right? So if we were just to feed this straight out to here with the screwdriver, click. No, I don't want to rotate the whole thing. There we go. Um, you would expect that to emit a redstone signal, right? Remember, the insulated redstone conduits um, will kind of lose one redstone signal strength. So if I drop these items on here again, right, imagine we wanted, this This should be emitting a signal, you would think, and it is, except this guy's losing one, right? It just turned on because we're at power level 34. So we want to kind of double this. Um, so I'm going to get myself um, one of these guys here. Let's um, put this away, and then I can turn this into a multiplier. And I'm gonna also want a constant. I'm gonna want a couple constants, and I think I have to craft those, so bear with me a moment. Super Circuit Maker. Um, do want the repeater. I'm gonna get rid of the lever for now. And I can probably put away... Not much, I need all these things. I need everything in my inventory right now. I don't need my food. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. I'm avoiding food. Um, we'll get couple more of you and then I'm gonna get you guys um, cool now I just have 
what I need. Okay, so I want to basically double this um, because we know we're going to lose one signal strength here. I could just do plus one. I guess that wouldn't hurt. Um, maybe I will do plus one. So we'll do, remember, 17 per number, right? So if I just do, um, what I'm going to do is feed into here. We're going to do plus a constant. And that constant will be 17. So then we just do this. Okay, so if we read these metrics, this should be working now. Uh, you come over here, right? So we have 17, that becomes zero. Right, we have to do that, and now we're cool. So let's break this for a sec, and we'll see how this is working, right? Um, we're gonna put the runic altar back, right? We'll notice that we're not getting a signal because we're basically getting here zero plus 17 equals 17, which, Again, I think this is just a nuance of insulated redstone conduits. Um, if this was just a regular redstone signal, it's, it's basically doing that subtraction thing, right? It's, it's losing one signal strength. And that's just insulated redstone conduits do that. I don't know what's up with it. I don't know if it's intended to lose a signal strength or if that's a bug, but it's happening. So we're dealing with it. All right. But as soon as the runic altar starts crafting now, one, two, three, four, five, hey right now. Uh, I'm missing you and you. As soon as it's crafting, it's emitting that signal strength, right? Of 34, right? And then a few seconds later, it's at 51 because it's ready for the thing. So that's cool. Whoops, I still have you in there, don't I? <laughs> so now we know how to detect when there's a signal strength of one, which means there's mana being fed into the runic altar. The next thing we want to check for is signal strength of two, which means that we're ready to drop the living rock. Right? And that's going to be on the green channel. And I'm going to feed that right here uh, to the green channel. Now to check that, um, I've determined through testing and through building this on a separate you know, setup that we want to do an ender pulsar, right? And that's how this is going to work next. So basically um, what we want to do is read that signal strength of two. So let's get a subtractor here. And so right now you're feeding and you would be like uh, 50 something, right? Uh, so let's just do a minus 17 here for the time being. So we'll do this. Actually, I want it to be here. And then we're going to want to rotate you. I think that's it where I want it to be. Uh, I want to disable that. You're going to be 17. And then you're going to be not connected there. Cool. And then I think that's correct. All right. And we'll test this with our reader now. Right. So let's get our items dropped on there. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. So now you're, if we get our reader set up. 51, so that's cool. So this should be emitting a signal strength of 17, 51, read from it, zero, 34, cool. That's pretty good. And then what's gonna happen is this is going to feed into a redstone torch, which is then going to feed into an ender pulsar, which is then going to Ender pulse, this guy, on a rate of, let's say, every three seconds. Does that sound cool? Neat. All right, guys, so I've removed the spreader here to demonstrate this more cleanly. Uh, we've also set this number to 34. So right now, no signals being emitted, right? Uh, this guy's going to emit a redstone signal of one when he's ready to accept mana, meaning basically that he has a valid recipe sitting in front of him, right? So that means he should be emitting a signal strength of one, uh, which comes into here as 17, right? Plus 17 yields the 34 that we want. Cool. Um, now, we're subtracting 34 here so that's a signal strength of zero which means this redstone torch is staying on and preventing the pulsar from blinking once we've got enough mana there watch what happens 
the torch should shut off and start blinking the pulsar. Boom. Which is saying, or it's going to say, drop the living rock. Cool? All right, so next up, let's get ready for the chest to the phantom face, which is going to be bound to this automatic precision dropper that we've got here. Um, now, I actually want you to be on deactivation mode. Yeah, deactivation mode's fine, because we're not actually going to do any redstoning with that. That thing's just going to drop anything it's given immediately. Um, and I should probably have lighting down here. That probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. And we shouldn't have too many problems with monsters in this area, because I'm blocking stuff so next step let's get items in here so we'll put um i kind of want to leave these lights down here for now though they're not totally needed but let's just do this um and then we're going to bind this should reach from here to here nice eight blocks away perfect and then we can item conduit this what i basically want is something like this um, we're going to have two sets of item conduits, okay? One set that's going to move everything but living rock, that's going to happen immediately. Um, and then another set that's only going to move living rock when we're getting the redstone signal that we want. Cool? Um, so for that, we're going to want insulated redstone conduiting here. Um, you can be green, and I'm just going to turn you off for now. Uh, you are disabled. Nice. Cool? So you're going to extract on brown when you receive a redstone signal on the green color okay you are going to extract from west on the green channel always um and we want to filter on living rock for both of these right so you let's get living rock okay you are going to whitelist living rock and you are going to blacklist living rock okay and on the west side is the chest so on the east side is going to be insert green and over here is going to be insert brown cool so basically what this means is any items that go in here are going to immediately be dropped but any items that are as long as they're not living rock Right? Living Rock is only going to happen when it gets the green pulse. So let's test this um, by doing the following. So I'm going to put you in there. So see what's happening? It's crafting up there. And then as soon as the crafting is done, it should drop that. So we'll see it pulse. Now one thing I've noticed is sometimes it's pulsing a little too quickly. So we might need to do... Oh, there we go. Nice. Did it drop? It totally dropped it. Nice. Okay. Every now and then it pulses a little too quickly. So we're going to want to watch out for that. Um, we'll see if that becomes a problem or not. If it does, we can do something like a repeater. But that actually seemed to work out all right. Pretty cool, right? So you'll notice it's still pulsing, obviously, right? And if we put that living rock back in there, we'll be able to see um, on pulse. So... Sometimes it takes a few seconds for the pulse to trigger the extraction, but that's okay. We'll give it a chance here. Come on, buddy. You worked once already. There it goes. So it did pulse, and it did drop the living rock. Neat. So it just takes a second sometimes, but that's okay. Like I said, we might keep an eye on that. So that's kind of the metric, right? So basically, you put these five items in plus living rock, and eventually it's going to craft. Now, the problem that we run into, okay, uh, which I'm going to break you, is what happens if we put two sets of items in at a time. Okay, so I'm going to put the living rock in. I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five. That ain't going to work. See? Not working. That's our problem. So we have to prevent that. Next stage of the build. Now, before we get to the next stage of the build, I'm going to need a few more things from Applied Energistics. But keep in mind that what we've accomplished so far, and this is very important for you guys to focus on, is that thus far we've made it so that if we put one set of crafting ingredients in here, it's going to automatically craft. The only stage that we didn't do is put a, like a mechanical user with a wand of the forest in there to hit the thing. But in terms of right placing the appropriate items in here, right one set of crafting ingredients it will automatically craft, right? It's making the rune, it's gonna start blinking, and within a few seconds, um, you know, after a couple pulses of that ender pulsar, which are pretty short bursts of redstone signaling, um, it will go ahead and drop that living rock. 
Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so let's keep an eye on that, right? Keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to the next uh, stuff. We need to do a few more things with, so I'm gonna put away some stuff I don't need anymore. I don't need a lot of what I have right now. Um, pretty much all Super Circuit Maker related stuff and this guy and this guy, and I don't think I'm gonna need that guy anymore. Cool. Probably won't need you guys either, uh, but I wanna hang on to these things for now. So that's cool. Let's move on to making a few more things like processors. So I'd like you to know how to make calculation processors, right? So basically I wanna say, what do we have by way of processors already? We already have you and you. So let's get gold and diamond. And basically I'm gonna say gold makes this, diamond makes this. The next thing we want to do though is get the Certus one. And that requires pure Certus, right? So we're gonna to have to make that pretty correct. Did I make both of those patterns? Did I forget to grab that? There we go. Okay. So those guys, right, input diamond, get engineering processor, input gold, get logic processor. Let's automate the pure Certus because in order to get calculation processor, you have to use pure Certus. You can't use regular Certus, okay? Important fact. Now to get pure Certus, you have to drop a Certus quartz seed made from Certus quartz dust and sand into a puddle of water. Uh, to make the, fa the process faster, add growth accelerators. So this thing is really slow unless you do growth accelerators. Let me show you. Uh, so Certus dust plus sand yields two Certus quartz seeds, okay? This item never despawns, by the way. Uh, and if we have a bucket of water, no, not lava, water. We'll peek outside for a sec. Doesn't matter where we do this, it's just for demonstration purposes, right? That's all, drop those items in there, okay? This is a really slow process. I'm gonna go inside for a minute and craft the items we need, and then we'll come back and see just how slow this is, okay? Uh, but we want growth accelerators that will speed this up, okay? For this, we need some Fluix blocks. So I'm gonna want five of these guys, okay? So let's get five of these. So let's get more Fluix. Let's get like 20 Fluix. That shouldn't be too bad of a request. It should be dropping them downstairs and everything should be working in theory, I hope. See, everything's crafting, sweet. I love automation. And it's all being sucked in, nice. So we want five of these, okay. Um, and growth accelerators. So we're gonna want glass cable. Do we know how to make that yet? No, we should probably teach that. Um, basic Fluix glass cable. So we're gonna want this, and then we're gonna want that, okay? And we're gonna want about 10 of them. Sweet, I like it. Nice, okay. Uh, and then we're also gonna want the Certus glass, which I may have taught it how to make yet, or no. Uh, let's do growth accelerators again. It's called quartz glass, right? So you do, you know how to make fused quartz, but not quartz glass. But now you do. So let's get about, that's fused, quartz glass. Let's get about 20 AU, does that sound cool? All right, now I should be able to make my growth accelerators. Five, beautiful. So while that was going, did you magnet this up or something? Oh, you totally did, all right. So that was a bad example because you didn't really go far. But you can see it's not really moving much, right? So let's, that didn't even make like any percentage at all, like 0%, that, that made zero progress. I'm gonna leave those in there for a minute while I go inside, how's that sound? Okay, let's put these growth accelerators around this water. So to do this, um, oh good, I can break this stuff, neat. 
Uh, let's pick up this water for a second. We're going to want these growth accelerators here, 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 and here. And here. Okay. Um, and you want the checkered side, if you will, uh, to be what... So wrench it so that it's like that, right? The circle side is what accepts power, and that side is what um, you want touching the water source block. Cool. Um, this importer is going to have to move. And we're going to put you back. And you're whitelisted. I want you to be Fluix blocks only again. Uh, what? I don't have any Fluix crystals. Where's the recipe? For oh, I probably, yeah, I broke that. Okay, derp. So let's, uh, you're whitelist still. So let's set the importer back on here. Let's ask for a Fluix block. Is my magnet on? Take that off for a sec. Or no, wait, I have the um, thing down here which prevents magnet from being affected. Fluix. Neat. So we're gonna add you to the whitelist again. And then you're cool, right? And then you're happy and satisfied with that crafting operation. Neat. So the other thing we're going to do now, right, is go up here. You guys have made 0% progress. It's literally gotten nowhere. It will eventually go. It's just really slow. Like, really slow. Um, so to make it faster, you need those growth accelerators. So energy acceptor. We've already got an energy acceptor down here, don't we? Yeah, we totally do. Uh, that's good news for me. Uh, I just need some cable. Let's get like 10 more of you. And you can see it crafting over there, which is neat. Nice. All right. Um, can I move this energy acceptor in a way that would be a little less obvious? Underneath is in use, right? Do I have underneath in use? I'm pretty sure I do. Yes, but it's in use with these cables. All right. So I could probably put this energy acceptor under here, right? And that would be a thing. So he's getting RF apparently. I did put some this thing yeah nice let's hide you a little bit cool so that should be giving power to the energy acceptor now we just need to feed power over to these things okay so these growth accelerators need power from the energy acceptor so let's see how i could get that power over there all this is running over here if I ran this behind here, that might be a little bit better. So let's rearrange this cabling. So this should work. Let's lower it a little bit, because I'm going to want to probably tap into here. I would imagine, maybe, we'll see. We'll see. Cool. So that should be reconnected again. You've got power because you're glowing. That's good. Let's rotate this guy a little bit. The side that you click on for these matters. So I think we want to click on this side and then it'll rotate it that way. Neat. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to want to power four of these, right? So ultimately we want a cable here. Let's do it here. 
to here. So you can see how they lit up. They're getting power now, which is good. Cool. Um, let's do these. And then what I'll probably wind up doing is rotating this guy. It doesn't really matter. Like that. There we go. So that's pretty good. Now if we pop upstairs, eh, not the greatest look. Could I hide this a little bit better? Um, probably. There are facades that I can use to cover this up. What I'm thinking though is, let's move the energy acceptor and the energy conduit. We'll put the energy acceptor like, for now, here. Yeah, because this cable's here, I need this to be where it is. Let's move this cable. Cool. That should be good. All right, so that should be good. So we can cover this up now. So then really the only thing that's showing is that, and we can cover that up with a facade. So now all these guys are powered, right? In theory. They might be a little bit low on power though. Right, because uh, I didn't reconnect this dude. I forget how much power these guys use. It might be a little bit more than ADR if it ticked, though. You are feeding this guy, right? Let's get another energy conduit or two. So you should be serving all these tiles. And now these guys are powered. Nice. That's what I want to see. So let's see how fast this is now. You ready? If I drop these in here, and we back up for a second. Those crystal growth accelerators very rapidly increase the speed at which these things grow. We're already at 10%. So 9%, but you know what I mean. So I'll give that a second. We'll be back when they're fully grown. And then we're going to add them to the whitelist and set up a recipe for them.